Welcome to Weekly with Olivier Vedrin. I am Olivier Vedrin. We'll spend together 20 minutes uh, to discuss about what happened in the world and what happened in Ukraine. My first point, my first tema, Avdiivka. What happened in Avdiivka now? We can see a new offensive with heavy weapons in Ukraine from those uh, militants backed by Russian troops. And uh, really why now? I have some ideas why now. First of all, and we will speak about that with my guest. First of all, remember this phone call between Trump and Putin. Maybe Putin think now we can do what you want with Ukraine, because Ukraine is not the first subject of the new president of USA. Secondly, you know, we have those elections now in France, in April, in Germany, in Netherlands. Then maybe Putin want to use these times to do an offensive in Ukraine. And now in this part of Ukraine, in this town of Avdievka, they are doing this offensive with heavy weapons. With heavy weapons. Can you imagine some militants with heavy weapons? This is, this is obvious. This is the proof that Russia is supporting those militants. Why now I say to you, maybe this phone call and other things. Now, you know, in Berlin, uh, a portion co met uh, Merkel. They talked about the Minsk agreements. And I think, really, Russia and Putin want to put the pressure on Ukraine. And this is very bad because, uh, you know, Ukraine needs peace to do reforms, to go to Europe. And, of course, this is another proof that Putin cannot let Ukraine to be successful in reforms and in his way to go to the EU. Then he will do his best to disturb to stop Ukraine to be an independent state and to go to the Western world. And uh, what's happened in Advietka is really, really the proof that we are in war and this war is continuing and will continue. Now I want to speak about another, another subject, you know, because we We spoke about Trump, but I want to speak about this visit of Trump in UK. It's very interesting. You can see in some yeah, English newspapers in UK, the reaction of the people. They don't want Trump to come in UK. That's really amazing. You know, uh, I say to you one week before, I think, yeah, Uh, that maybe the Trump elections, the consequences of the Trump elections will be that uh, now in Europe uh, we will wake up to face populism. And in UK, really, they don't want Trump to come. And this is like a paradox because they voted for the Brexit and they don't want Trump to come. What's going on? Interesting fact. And I think uh, we, we will do some analysis about that. And I think UK, the people of UK, uh, why they don't want Trump? Because they are waking up. They are waking up because they know that now populism can be a, a nightmare uh, for, for, for UK. And populism, and one of the reasons of populism is the Brexit. Maybe 
with this uh, new, um, we are thinking with, with what happened now in UK uh, with the visit of, of Trump, maybe that can have some consequences on the process of the Brexit. We will see. And, oh, another fact also I want to discuss about is uh, those Russian, Russian leaders, they think already that they are at war totally uh, paranoiac attitude and you know that for some leaders in, in Russia the third world war was the cold war and now they are talking about the fourth world war they are in war we are in peace in Europe and they are in war but maybe they are right when we see what's happening in Ukraine maybe Ukraine is only the first step of the revival of a post-Soviet empire in Russia. Yes, maybe we are in war. And maybe we have to face quickly another, can I say, manipulation of this new imperial view of Putin in Europe. For myself, Ukraine is only the first step of this new imperial view of Russia. We are in war, yes, and not only the Russian leaders think about that. Personally, I think about that. We are in war and Russia is now attacking Ukraine. Uh, I want to uh, finish with uh, what's happened in, in France. You know that France is my country. And now we are in the process of a presidential election. And we have some scandals of corruption and uh, with uh, some of our uh, candidates. And, uh, you know, uh, always in, 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 in Ukraine, uh, a lot of persons, they, they talked about uh, Marine Le Pen, François Fillon. Okay. And they say that this is the two uh, biggest uh, candidates for the uh, uh, French election. Uh, but nowadays, François Fillon has some problem of corruption in, 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 in France. And uh, that's very bad. That's very bad first for our democracy and that's very bad for France that some candidates can have uh, such problems. What you know in France now, the people they really take care about corruption, they don't want their candidates to be corrupted. And really, uh, now we have this um, in France, we, 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 we are in this mood that we want our politician to be clear, to be clear, to be sincere, to be honest. And this campaign in France now is very interesting because the people are waiting for morality uh, in this campaign. And the example of this, this case of corruption with François Fillon is very interesting. Because now in France, a lot of persons, a lot of citizens are fed up about those politicians who are corrupted, who take money from the parliament, give to their family and all that. France is changing. France wants a clean political, uh, can I say, clean political world, clean co political candidates, and that's very good uh, because uh, I, I want to 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 hand this question with the example of General de Gaulle. General de Gaulle was not corrupt. General de Gaulle was sincere, clear, and honest. And I think in France. We want a new General de Gaulle, a man who take care about our country and not about his own pocket. And this is what now in France, in a lot of uh, area, from the from the right to the left, from the from the left to the right, a lot of people want that clean person. I, I repeat, from the right to the left and the left to the right, we want a clean candidate. I'm happy to receive today uh, my guest, Volodymyr Polivy. Please, Volodymyr. Hi, Olivier. Hi. Glad to see you. Glad to see you also. Um, then you are uh, an expert 
in security and military affairs. And then we will talk about what's happened in the east of Ukraine. And uh, everybody know that the situation now is it is very difficult, and uh, we can see some uh, new offensive. Um, then, for you, can you present maybe what is the situation at the front now? I am absolutely agree with you, Olivier, that uh, it is a very difficult situation uh, at the east of Ukraine because uh, at the end uh, of the January, uh, Russian-backed militants uh, started a new offensive in Avdiivka industrial zone. Um, they uh, launched uh, many um, multiple launched missile system um, rockets, uh, the um, artillery, they used the artillery, the mortars, and uh, after that they uh, started the offensive. But uh, Ukrainian troops uh, pelt uh, them back, and uh, after that uh, they managed uh, to uh, reach the frontline position of the Russian backed uh, militant. And, um, um, after, after this, uh, uh, separatists uh, started uh, to uh, shell the Avdivka, uh, and uh, this shelling could uh, cause the uh, human, humanitarian catastrophe in Avdivka uh, district. And, and then this is, for me, you know, it's just some coincidence, because why uh, attacks were so intensive now? You think this is because this phone, this phone call from, from Trump to Putin? To Putin, yes, yes, and uh, it was exactly the beginning of the uh, international visit uh, of the um, Poroshenko, mm -hmm. of the president of Ukraine, mm -hmm. Poroshenko, to Berlin, mm -hmm. to Merkel, mm -hmm. uh, on uh, which uh, they plan to discuss uh, the Minsk agreement and the situation on the east of Ukraine. And, and you think that the 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 the, the Russian, uh, the militant uh, backed by the Russian, they they use this timing. This mean, the, 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 I I mean the phone call from Trump to Putin and the visit of Poroshenko in Berlin, to start this offensive. I think uh, the plan was uh, the goal of Russians. Mm -hmm. uh, they have uh, had uh, two goals uh, mm -hmm. uh, during this offensive. First uh, first of all. Uh, uh, military um, goal was uh, to control the road mm -hmm. and logistic to Donetsk, from mm -hmm. Donetsk to Yesenovata mm -hmm. and, and Korlovka. After uh, they occupied, um, after they planned to occupy uh, some part of Avdiivka, mm -hmm. um, uh, they want uh, to provoke Ukrainian troops uh, to a shell on this uh, district of Avdivka, mm. and after that uh, they want to uh, uh, charge Ukrainian troops mm. that uh, they are shelling in the residential areas areas of Avdivka. You know, you know uh, that's that's for me. Uh, that was the plan. You, you speak about uh, Golovka, yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, then uh, for me Golovka, I, I know because I I was in Golovka in 1994, and in Golovka we have a French institute, and I know this place. And for me, I know that uh, some of person I met are under the. Uh, the attacks and for me this personal feeling. Mm -hmm. <sighs> then this, those attacks, because we don't have only one, those attacks mm -hmm. are very intensive now and do you think that we can expect, we can see in a few months a large-scale Russian offensive in Ukraine? Because this is the question. Why? What? What Putin will do, and why? And this large-scale uh, Russian offensive is is possible. Thanks for this question, Olivier. But I think uh, it uh, it isn't possible to to have a big-scale uh, Russian offensive at this time, at the end of the winter, mm -hmm. because we are expecting, for example, uh, the spring mud on the roads, on yeah, the yeah. ground. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
and uh, uh, that is why it's not possible right now. But uh, we should remember that uh, uh, Russia uh, plans uh, the large-scale military training in the summer of the 2017 in some months mm -hmm. um, in which will be involved uh, more than 100,000 person soldiers on the Ukrainian body, um, border uh, on the um, on the Russian mm -hmm. west mm -hmm. border and in Belarus too mm. uh, yes and they hired for this purpose they uh, now they have hired mm -hmm. for this purpose more than uh, 4,000 railroad uh, platform mm -hmm. for their troops. Mm -hmm. And do you think this is, this is th that's a training, yeah? Now we know that that's a training, but do you think they can use that to, to start an offensive? Um, I think uh, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, one from the way to press on Ukraine, mm -hmm. on political, and military uh, uh, way uh, at the same time. But uh, for the, 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 the price will be high. Uh, the price to pay for a large... Are you uh, talking about offer? money or about the people? The people and the money also, because the economy of Russia is not uh, very good, you know, very... But, uh, you know, Olivier, you must agree that uh, the, uh, the economy is better than Ukrainian. Yeah, of course, yeah. And that is why maybe, maybe uh, they want to pay this price. Okay. And you, uh, you talked about uh, Poroshenko in Berlin. And uh, what have Poroshenko and Merkel agreed on in Berlin? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, I think it was some kind of, kind of uh, uh, tribal dances around the Minsk agreement, mm -hmm. agram, uh, around the uh, same questions uh, mm -hmm. about uh, ceasefire, about uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, in fact, I want to remember that uh, uh, I want to emphasis, emphasis, I want to put in phases mm -hmm. that uh, Minsk agreement is totally Russian document, mm. and uh, there is only uh, one beneficiary from this document, and this beneficiary is Russia, not Ukraine, mm -hmm. and that is why. Um, uh, that's not enough to discuss only the Minsk agreement. If my Merkel uh, says uh, we should maintain Minsk agreement, mm -hmm. uh, that's a bad scene for Ukraine except the ceasefire. Okay. Because the other points are to change our constitution, yes, and to I, rec I know recognize this is, the, the status dismiss, of... Dismiss, uh, uh, this Minsk agreement is, is, is a really uh, not a good deal and is a really Russian agreement. I know that. Mm -hmm. I, I am agree with you, and but we ha I have to I have to talk about uh, my last question also. Is an agreement possible between Poroshenko and Trump? Because this is now the first question for the foreign policy of Ukraine. Um, I want back uh, to the situation on the e east of Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, because uh, you know uh, uh, there is one interesting fact: our army. Mm -hmm. Uh, it seems to me, mm -hmm. expected this offensive mm -hmm. and uh, they used it in the best way. Mm -hmm. um, they expected the offensives, offensive, they repealed the attack and after that they managed to uh, reach the front position of mm -hmm. the separatists. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this way uh, they showed that uh, we are, um, we, Ukraine, Mm -hmm. is the subject mm -hmm. of the foreign policy, uh, uh, not the object, mm -hmm. but the subject of the foreign... And uh, we have our strong foreign po policy mm -hmm. and we have the military potential to, to change the situation on the east if uh, Russian troops, uh, uh, if Russia withdraw uh, their troops. Mm -hmm. Then for you the agreement. And, no. uh, and uh, uh, concerning the Trump, the yeah. agreement with Trump, is it possible? Yes. And uh, it is a good platform, uh, the situation, uh, the, um, 
uh, escalation of situation on the east uh, mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, you know, um, it's a good platform to change mm -hmm. uh, the position in negotiations with the United States. Mm -hmm. Yes, because uh, I think uh, um, it is uh, profitable for Ukraine to start, for example, some offensives on the south mm -hmm. of our front line mm -hmm. to show that we have a um, Power, we have an army, mm -hmm. we have an opportunity to, uh, uh, to back our territory. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Olivia. And uh, see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I hope you enjoyed those 20 minutes together. Have a nice week. See you next Sunday. And remember what Winston Churchill said during the Second World War never give up. Oh,